Hey there folks, got a long one for you today. It's an RU battle against Super Silver 1. Uh, I'm looking at his team and I'm thinking it's quite interesting. I'm expecting him to lead off with Crustle, which is why I lead off with my Quillfish. Uh, you know, it'll get the nice attack drop and hopefully scare him out and prevent him from setting up spikes and other entry hazards first turn. Um, meanwhile, I could just set up spikes. Anyway, he leads off with Magnezone, not gonna want to stay in. I guess he was thinking I'd lead off with Steelix, which I considered doing. Here's the thing, though. I mean, unless I think, well, Hidden Power Fire, Steelix would not like. Anyway, um, I was expecting him to go for Volt Switch. He did go for Volt Switch. Gargan can take that, even though it is physically defensive, not specially defensive. I switch out into George the Third here, uh, my Slow King, as he sends out Crustle. Really, I should have sent out, um... I should have sent out my Quillfish, but oh well, whatever. Uh, I go for the Scald here, just in case he decided he wanted to stay in and set up more spikes. I get the burn against his Slow King, which is kind of funny. Uh, I'm wondering why he would send it in. Does he have Shadow Ball or something? Maybe he's going to go for a Toxic. Either way, not going to want to stay in. I go out into maybe my Audino. It's a special wall. It can pretty much wall this guy, hopefully. He goes for a Dragon Tail, which I found very interesting. Uh, Tuesday's now going to be out, and I consider staying in because it's extremely unlikely that he carries the Psychic, but I wouldn't have expected Dragon Tail either, so I really do not know what to expect from this guy. So, yeah, he's racking up burn damage, which is nice. He's going to go ahead and withdraw, actually, uh, into Magnezone as I set up Spikes. Again, I really didn't think he was carrying the Psychic, so it pays off for me. I've, got up, I've gotten off my first round of Spikes, and he has no Spinner. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch out now into my Audino, thinking that I can probably take pretty much any hit from this Magnezone. I'm expecting it's probably any Violate Magnezone, um, but who knows. Anyway, interesting that his hidden power is not... So his hidden power isn't fighting, which I guess is the recommended hidden power. He goes for Thunderbolt, that does a lot of damage, and I get paralyzed. I was actually really surprised how much damage I did, considering Audino is one of my special walls. Um, here he's going to switch out. He's going to go into Crustle, uh, as I've gone for the Wish. I actually do a Switch as well. Uh, I wasn't sure what he was going to do, but I figured send out Hatterack, my Steelix, and no matter what, I'll be back at full health, I'll have my Sturdy up, and it'll all be good. So now it's my Stealth Rocker against his Stealth Rocker, most likely. We both carry Earthquake, um, or we, rather, we both carry moves that are super effective against the other one, but they're both non-stab, so I could have gone for the Stone Edge. I decided instead to go for the Stealth Rock. Actually... I would probably be better off with Gyro Ball in the set, to be honest. And Gyro Ball would actually also be super effective, so... I wonder why I don't want Gyro Ball. I mean, I, yeah, I'm fine. It's too, uh, Stone Edge hits some Pokémon harder. But anyway, I go for the Dragon Tail just to rack up some entry hazard damage. Out and out, there's going to come Drapion. I think, do I have anything to fear from this guy? And the answer is really no. I mean, usually the most powerful attacks they have are Night Slash. He carries Earthquake, so I'm like, oh, okay, let's see how much that does. Um, I mean, I'm not going to want to take a bunch of them, but I can take a few. So, here I go for the Earthquake. Oh, wait, hold on. So, it's Earth... My the set is Stealth Rock, Dragon Tail, Earthquake. Yeah, yeah, never mind. Ignore me. Uh, well, don't ignore me, because if you were ignoring me, why would you be watching this battle? Anyway, he sends out uh, his Mag uh, Magneton. I was expecting him to have the Hidden Power Fire and just... KO me, really. Instead, he goes for the Magnet Rise, and I'm locked in. There's nothing I can do, so good move for him. And now here comes the Hidden Power. I'm like, okay, well, too bad, Steelix. And it's not Hidden Power Fire. It's something that's regularly effective. I'm guessing Hidden Power Ice. Uh, but yeah, so I'm able to just drag and tail him out. That's great. Um, so now Audino is out. Uh, his Audino, and I'm expecting it's running probably a similar set to the one mine runs. So far, here's one move confirmed. We both run Protect. So I just went for the Dragon Tail just to phase it out because there's really nothing else I really want to do against Audino. I guess I could just go for Earth Earthquake um, and do some damage, but eh. Here he goes for the Wish, uh, and now I go for the Dragon Tail, and this is uh, really unfortunate. Um, although, he's probably just going to switch next turn anyway, so it's not like it's going to be a huge deal. Audino actually takes the opportunity to go for Heal Bell, but that just means that that wish is going to be completely wasted. And, you know, I really didn't mind, it really didn't benefit me much to have his Slow King burn, so I don't really care there. I get a crit on that, was that right? Uh, anyway, oh, here Audino's wish comes true. Yeah, here Audino's wish comes true. I don't know why I didn't go for the Dragon Tail. Um, eh, so, yeah, uh, here Audino's going to get withdrawn. 
out now is going to come Slow King, which is going to take a lot of damage from injury hazards, but oh again, yeah, now here I go for the Dragon Tail, realizing Dragon Tailing is probably my best bet, even though he does have two Pokemon with Regenerator, so it's kind of pointless. Well, I mean, the other three Pokemon aren't going to enjoy getting entry hazards to the face, although Aldino can wish, they use Wish to uh, regain them some health. So here, Aldino goes for Wish, expecting me to Dragon Tail. Instead, I go for the Earthquake, uh, and it's going to get him down to below half, thanks to a crit, and do I feel bad about those crits? Not really, because it's not going to end up mattering too much, thanks to Regenerator and that Wish. So all it's really going to mean is that you know the wish is going to get him a little bit closer to full health, and the regenerator is going to get him up to pretty much full health. So anyway, yeah, Audino is basically back up to full health here. My uh, Audino is paralyzed. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. Audino is pretty slow; doesn't rely on its speed for anything. That's, I mean, it's taunt bait, but I don't think any of his Pokémon are going to be taunting anyway. Crustle is going to come out. I guess to threaten uh, it out with a physical attack. I go for the wish, uh, and. I mean, I, mean I, I think I calc it, and an X scissor shouldn't hit too hard, and Earthquake is non-stab, so... Anyway, gonna go out here into Tuesday. Tuesday's gonna recover up a bunch of health. If he goes for the Earthquake, God forbid. Um, but I don't think he's gonna go for the Earthquake. Indeed, he goes for Spikes, so we're both getting tons of entry hazards up. And this is a full-blown stall battle where it's really... And neither of us have spinners. Uh, so it's really going to depend on who can set up the most entry hazards and do the most amount of phasing. And he definitely has at least one phaser, and throw is almost certainly going to have circle throw. Huh? Ah, circle throw, ah. But, um, yeah. So, Cross is going to get withdrawn here. Uh, out now is going to come Audino. Um, and, yeah, going to take a lot of damage. I go for spikes. I think that's my third round. Not positive. But... Either way, I'm getting to the point where I've got as many... No, this is going to be the third round of spikes. I'm sorry. So this is now the third round of spikes, and now I am maxed out with my entry hazards because I don't have toxic spikes, although it would have been nice um, considering that his Drapion uh, is now down as well. But really, his toxic spikes aren't so much worth it, and this guy right here would be scary if it got its guts boost... Uh, if it got a gut boost. So I've actually got to be really careful. Don't want to go for the poison jab. That would just be really awful because, I mean, he'd just be able, he would have his attack power doubled and throw is kind of beastly. Anyway, uh, I flinch him with waterfall. That's what I'm hoping for. Going for the flinches, hoping that I get enough of them to KO or at least get its health low. Goes for the payback. I'm not really expecting it to do too much, but, oh, so that was a crit. I was like, holy shit, that did a lot. But, Basically, the bottom line here is that I am extremely lucky that this thing uh, that has not had its guts ability activated. I didn't go for the poison jab at any point. Here I get another flinch. I'm getting a lot of flinches, but the thing about are you or the thing about stall battles is that minor crits, like minor bits of hacks like that, don't tend to matter in the long run, and the battles tend to be long enough that it all balances out. Uh, and as you see here, that crit absolutely did not matter at all because he just went for uh, went for rest. So this is probably the why well, actually no no yeah it's a saving grace that this guy doesn't have sleep talk that throw does not have sleep talk. Um, yeah, so he's asleep. He's got two turns of sleep to burn off. I just figure go ahead set up leech seed, uh, sap some health. And here, Crustle is down to basically no health, and in fact, it's actually going to die to the uh, to uh, the entry hazards, considering that it is weak to Stealth Rock. So that's great. Uh, that's the second Pokemon taken out on my opponent's side. Meanwhile, I still have all of mine, so that's that's excellent. I can go ahead, go for a switch here into maybe my Audino, um, who is going to take a lot of damage from those entry hazards. But you know, it's a special wall. I'm not fearing the Thunderbolt over much, and indeed, I take that hit decently well. I figure, go for the Wish, go for the Protect, maybe go for a Heal Bell at some point. Uh, here, he's going to go out into Audino, uh, who's going to get as much damage by the entry hazards as I was. Uh, I actually went for the Protect, just to try to get my health a little bit higher, since I was fearing a crit on that Thunderbolt, and that probably would have KO'd. Uh, well, it, would, it definitely would have KO'd with a crit. So anyway, he goes for uh, Wish. I go for Toxic on the off... Ch well, actually, I, I know he has Heal Bell. I don't know why. It basically means that he has to burn off a turn using Heal Bell uh, at some point. Or he can just let the Poison Damage rack up. It's his choice. Uh, 
My opponent is going to withdraw Adino at this point, go out into Magneton, going to take a lot of damage from those entry headers, and I wish I hadn't gotten fully paralyzed right there. I really do. Uh, and here he recovers back to almost full health, thanks to that wish pass. Um, wish is really an amazing move in 5th gen, with all the Pokemon that have high HPs being able to use it, and it being based on the user's HP, not on the recipient's. So here, what I, I get fully paralyzed yet again as he goes for the Thunderbolt, and I'm like, that's okay, I should be able to take it, and he gets a crit. So there the crit mattered, um, but, you know, whatever. I'm still leading, so I'm, I'm hopeful that this, you know, I'm not going to have a cleric anymore, so i got to be really careful of, um, of those, I'm, I'm going to have to be really careful of getting burned or poisoned or paralyzed. And I've also lost my Wish Passer, so any damage that's done is pretty much going to be permanently done. Uh, I go for the Dragon Tail as he goes for the Magnet Rise as an epic prediction, because I really didn't think he was going to be stupid enough to stay on the ground, and he knows that I couldn't... I mean, well, I switched into him, so he must have thought that I was going to try to go for the Earthquake. I go out into Tuesday, um, which is really a good... I figure it's a pretty good counter at this point for his uh, Slow King. Uh, I am not going to get burned, thank God, from that skull. Uh, I was really lucky there. Uh, and I'm just hoping that I can chase him out, scare him away. I go for the poison jab. Uh, really lucky that he didn't send out throw right then and there. But at least I've got that thing poisoned, so... He, I mean, again, he does still have Audino. He can, um... He can, uh, go for the heal bell. Uh, I'm now down to such low HP that I really don't want to switch out because I think I would just die to entry how to go for the waterfall, hoping to get the flinch. Uh, and indeed I do, so that's great. And I'm hoping that now his health will be low enough that another poison jab will do him in. I'm really wary of using poison jab, though, in case um, in case that throw comes out. And, in, and so here my opponent's going to go out into uh, Magnazone, and I really wish I'd predicted that. But instead I went for the poison jab, and... Yeah, that sucks. Gonna want to switch out here. No, I stay in and go for the Aqua Jet. Right. Yeah, uh, I was thinking that he would expect me to switch, and indeed he does. Goes for the Hidden Power, and as you see, it's uh, not very effective, so I really think it's probably Hidden Power Ice. I don't think Hidden Power Ice is a good move to have on here. Anyway, just go for another Aqua Jet. Try, just try to do as much damage as possible Excuse me, to this Magnezone. And now I've got a dead Quillfish. But that's okay. Uh, so it's, it's now a tie game. We each have four Pokemon, but I'm feeling like I can still pull this off. Goes for another Hidden Power Ice rather than switching out. Not sure why. I guess he was expecting me to Dragon Tail, but the thing is, a Dragon Tail was just as effective as, a K, as an actual KO because the next time he set, switches it in, it is going to be dead. Um, here I'm thinking that Steelix is a goner. At that level of HP, I don't want to be switching out, really. Uh, okay, fine, I'm up to 95. Uh, but... I'm, the question is, am I going to be faster? The answer is he's faster. If he'd gone for the Scald, he would have KO'd, but I think he was figuring that I would switch out. Instead, I go for the Dragon Tail. Oh, wait, okay. So I went for the Dragon Tail, so no real way to tell who was faster, unless I would actually have been paying attention to the leftover screen. But I didn't. So, anyway, Audino's back up. Um, I think I was expecting him to switch to get, uh, take advantage of Regenerator, and that's why I went for the uh, Dragon Tail. Anyway! Audino is going to go ahead and use Heal Bell. About time. Uh, really effective because now his throw is awake and I'm going to have to be scared. So Hatterak is not going to want to take a circle throw. I think it would die to a circle throw. Although, honestly, losing a Pokemon to circle throw is kind of better because at least then you uh, control the order. I don't know. So, whatever. I'm going to switch out. I'm going to go out into my physical wall. Um, my Gargon, I'm thinking I can put him to sleep, I can go for a Leech Seed, but unfortunately goes for the Circle Throw! And now out is going to come George III, and here I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna resist Circle Throw, he probably has Payback, uh, in fact I might have already seen Payback, I'm pretty sure I did, uh, but shouldn't be that big of a deal even though I'm a special wall rather than a physical wall. I don't want to be doing, doing too much switching, even with Regenerator. I go for the Fire Blast instead of the Scald because Fire Blast is a lower chance of burning. Uh, and I really don't want to get this thing burning. I basically hope, I'm basically foddering off towards the third. And here he goes for the bulk up and I'm like, oh, that's not good. Um, and here, here I really should have switched out right away, but instead I go for the Slack Off and I'm just, I'm basically trying to get him to kill me. Uh, but 
This is a bad, this is a bad move. This is a bad, 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 bad play because now he's at plus two. Uh, so a circle throw is going to start doing a lot of damage even to Pokemon that resist it. And my Fire Blasts are missing, but whatever. I don't actually want them to hit because there's a chance that they could burn. So here he goes for the payback and I am fearing, I'm fearing, it does about half. I go for a Fire Blast, this one connects, I'm just hoping to rack up a little bit of damage, and indeed I get a little bit, but holy crap, this is not a good situation for me at all. And I'm just letting him set up. I'm basically letting him set up. This was the stupidest thing I've ever done. Why did I just do this? And uh, afterwards I talked to Jade Hex, who's the guy who designed this team. Um, maybe I'll put a link to his channel in the description, or in the annotations. Uh, and I asked him, so basically, what do you do with our team with throw? And he was like, dot, 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 pray? I mean, he basically gave, throw shouldn't be that big of a deal if you don't let it set up. But, I mean, and Steelix can phase it out if it's got sturdy, I guess. Um, and uh, Tangela is going to be pretty good at dealing with it, especially if, you know, if it's put it to sleep. But in general, this is just not a good thing. So, here, I go into my Rotom, um, and here, you know, I, I don't think I can take him out with a Leaf Storm, but I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try. Uh, here he dies to Entry Hazards. Actually, no, wait, that's right, I don't, I go for the trick, which was actually a bad play, but I was hoping that he would get greedy and keep going for bulk ups, and then be forced to switch out. So now, I think, okay, based on the three Pokemon he has left, I'm just gonna keep going for the tricks, because, uh, I don't cripple anyone. Uh, so I keep going for the trick and he decides to protect with Aldino and so now I'm thinking, well, okay, he's got a choice. Someone's getting a choice scarf. Uh, who's it gonna be? And he's, he decides it's gonna be Audino. Which, if it's the same Audino set as mine, which I'm pretty sure it is, that's gonna be, uh, as, that's gonna be about the best thing because this guy really is gonna be crippled by a choice scarf. And now he's locked in to, uh, he's locked in to, um, Toxic. I actually just go for the Leaf Storm. I guess he left it in to fodder, fodder it out. I get the KO. That's great. That's one Pokemon down. But that throw is still out there, and I'm at minus two special attacks. So, here. Uh, throw is going to be back out. Luckily, it's going to get massively, massively damaged by those entry hazards. I'm going to go for the Volt Switch into a Pokemon that should hopefully be able to deal with it a little better. Uh, I'm going to go out into Gargon, my Tangela figure it's going to be the bulkiest Pokemon uh, to deal with him. He goes for the payback. Uh, luckily, payback mechanics don't double the payback power in Gen 5. They would have in Gen 4. I go for the Leech Seed. Just in, uh, I, This is the Pokemon that I really want to put to sleep, and I just want to see what he would do. He goes for the bulk up, and so now I'm thinking, okay, put it to sleep. Put it to sleep right now while you still have the effing chance. Uh, because otherwise... Holy oh crap. Um, it's, by the way, extremely lucky that Throw doesn't have access to Sleep Talk, because a Sleep Talk set, boosted by Guts, would be deadly. I guess the only reason, um, Heracross doesn't usually run that kind of set would be because it's not that bulky? I don't know. Uh, I'm sure that someone, someone somewhere has used a Sleep Talk, uh, Heracross, and not just in the anime. I actually do remember that episode from the anime. I think it's one of the, uh... The Pokemon League things. Anyway, I'm I actually wouldn't have managed to two hit KO one hit KO this uh, this slow king with a Giga Drain, but because he switched it in now, I am going to be able to uh, two hit KO it and take care of it before he can Fire Blast me. I'm not sure if he carries a Fire Blast, but he could carry various unsavory things. Uh, throw is going to be out. It's asleep. It's going to get massively damaged by the entry hazards, and this is good game. So, great game, Super Silver 1. It looked like it could go either way for a while. Uh, it was an excellent battle. Hope you folks enjoyed it. Comment, rate, subscribe, and challenge.